What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing a POV session and we are going to be using the Sigma 85mm f1.4 art with the Canon EOS R5. Let's go. So first kind of street POV I'm doing, although there isn't really a street around here to be honest with you. I live in the middle of pretty much nowhere. Uh, I'll be testing the Canon R5 you can see here with the Sigma 85mm f1.4. Now, I've actually done an in-depth review of this lens already, so if you wanna watch uh, that particular video, go ahead and watch, uh, click on this clip here. But, to be honest, I haven't really used this in an outdoor environment, really. I'm uh, more of a you know, wedding and street photographer, and as it is the off-season, although I really like this lens with events, I haven't really used it for anything else. So I thought, as it's now like lambing season, and as I live pretty much, as you can see, pretty much in the middle of nowhere, we'll go ahead and take some photos of some nice lambs. As you can see, it is a gorgeous day here in England. Uh, it's very rare you'll get a spring day like this, especially in kind of like early to mid-March. So I thought, give a go, have a look, see what we end up with. Now I'm guessing the first thing to note with this uh, lens here, it is big. Now it's quite a metal construction, it's a pretty decent uh, decent build lens, but the main issue you've got it is just a very large lens with a very large filter thread of 86 millimeters, which is, because I shoot with the Canon 85mm f1.4, you'll notice that the filter thread is a lot smaller, just 77 millimeters. So if you're planning on buying this lens, beware that it is quite a big 85mm, especially if you compare it to the Canon 85 1.8 and even the 85mm 1.2. So as you can see, it's lambing season at the moment. I must say, I love this time of year. You can get some great photos, as you can see. It is a lovely day as well, sunset. I must say, that sunset, you can see, absolutely lovely. I've been wanting days like this for ages. I've been stuck in, cooped inside, making just tutorials, and it's nice to get out and about and actually test these, uh, test these lenses for the first time. Now, because this is a DSLR lens, obviously you can use it on old DSLR cameras like the 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, even 6D. But obviously I shoot with the R5 and I must say it is really good. When it comes to autofocus, it is a really good lens when it comes to the autofocus. It just finds that subject and just locks onto it. Now obviously I've got it on animal tracking at the moment. So it makes it a little bit easier to find the animals, especially even in like kind of brightly lit environments like today. Um, and with the R5 coupled with this 85mm, I must say it works super nicely. Now it could be better, I've got to admit, the Canon 85mm 1.4 has got probably slightly faster autofocus, but to be honest, you wouldn't really much notice the difference. It is just locks onto that subject, especially if you've got it on AI servo, locks onto that subject and just finds it for you. It's really, really handy. You can focus on like the composition of it, focus on the composition of your photos, whatnot. Ah, oh, I just ran away. Now the one thing that I really like about this Canon 85 versus other 85 mils is this one is weather sealed. Now obviously the Canon one is, but if you have a look at other Sigma Art Series lenses, they aren't actually weather sealed at all, which means you can't really take them in an outdoor environment. So if it was raining today or, you know, go out into London and it's raining, I just wouldn't want to bring this lens just in case it gets broken. But to be honest, this lens here with its weather sealing makes it a lot, lot easier. Let's get a bit lower on this one. Now obviously it's a portrait lens, but to be honest, an 85mm prime is pretty much, you can use it for pretty much anything. If you're a landscape photographer, wedding photographer, events photographer, 85mm primes are super handy. And to be honest, it's part of what I would class as the holy trinity of primes. So you'd get 35mm for your nice wide angle stuff. You've got your 50mm, which is kind of good for general purpose. It's also one of the cheapest primes you can buy, or a set of cheapest primes like the 50mm 1.8. 
but then you've also got the 85 mil although it's probably the more expensive out of the trio it's the one that i would probably use the most i must say i'm a 35 and an 85 prime user i don't really use 50s much but i must say i love an 85. now obviously i'm shooting with the r5 which is a 45 megapixel full frame camera which means i can crop in in some of these shots so i can get a little bit closer to my subject uh, probably cropping around 50% still keep that nice nice resolution if you're shooting with the you know the R or possibly even the uh, R6 which is lower resolution only just 20 megapixels probably won't be able to crop in as much as I can that's why I recommend if you're interested in cropping probably recommend the uh, Canon R5 Now, if you've updated your um, Canon, uh, either R5, R6 or R3, you'll find that uh, you, what you can do, if you wanted to, is uh, uh, track animals as well as people. But now you've got the full focus as well as like automotive, which actually means you can uh, focus onto cars or motorbikes. Now, again, not something I do, but if you're interested in that, if you update the Canon R5, you can actually do that in camera. So the actual autofocus, even though it's either the Canon R5 or R6, you've got the features of the R3 that they were selling. So that's actually a real big bonus, is they're actually forward updating your cameras so you can actually use it. Cool, well, I think I've uh, done enough of these sheep. I'm gonna head over to the river that I live by. I'm gonna try and get that sunset it's just dropping quite quickly now. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, take some photos of the, uh, of the sunset. Now, as you can tell, I am wearing a coat and it is absolutely freezing. And look at these guys. I'm gonna take some photos in a second. You can see they're swimming in the water. That's crazy. Must be like five degrees in this river. Switch it back to people as we're now focusing on people now instead of uh, the sheep earlier. Crazy. Now, most of these photos I've been shooting at F2. F2 is by far one of my favourite uh, kind of apertures. It's not too shallow, because sometimes you can be just very, very shallow. Um, but it's also got a good amount of depth to it. I, I find it's one of the most reliable apertures uh, you can focus on, especially if you're doing like weddings and portraits. If you're in a fast paced environment, you just can't miss that kind of key shot, you know, first kiss and things like that. So I find F2 is, is definitely one of the most reliable apertures for, in my opinion. And I find that's the same with this lens here. Um, although I am actually struggling a little bit to find the right place. Camera's kind of, although it might be a little bit low light, camera's focusing on like bits and bobs that I don't want it to, like the foreground and background. So I might actually switch over to my uh, single point focus now. I'm doing a little bit more landscape. Now I still at that time of year, it's not fully, the trees aren't fully green yet. They're still quite bare. We have had quite a big storm about a week or two ago so any leaves that were on the trees have definitely gone so I have to wait a little bit more in that time of year but it's starting to become a little bit warmer I can actually venture outside without being frozen to death so that's always quite nice and as you can see it's a real nice spring day so this is really what I wanted to get to this bridge here this is uh, one of Great Barford's many bridges but it's absolutely great at sunset one of my favourite places to photograph because uh, you're above everything really and this time of year the sun sets right next to where you can kind of see that church so you can almost get that silhouette of the church which is always quite nice the only downside it is pretty loud because of the uh, weir that's just below us you can really almost create this silhouette look which is quite nice Great Barford's got a bunch of really old 
kind of uh, buildings. Got an old, very old 15th century kind of uh, bridge. And it's quite nice to photograph because of the kind of old style red brick. Well, I'm gonna try and get some, uh, light isn't fading, but it's certainly starting to. I'm gonna go try and get a few more shots before uh, light completely finishes. Sunset sets quite quickly, so you've got to be kind of uh, pretty fast with it. Now what's nice about the R5 is you've got a decent amount of ISO performance. Not as good as the Canon R6. If you're after a more low light camera, then definitely recommend the R6 over the R5. But uh, it's quite good because you've got, especially if you're shooting at low ISOs, you've got a nice amount of grain reduction. And especially with Lightroom at the moment, you can really reduce the amount of grain in it. Now the only gripe I really have with this camera versus the Canon 85mm f1.4 is it doesn't have image stabilisation. And if you're more of a hybrid shooter, which for instance I am myself, you know, I do video and photography, then the Canon 85mm 1.4 is going to be a lot better purchase simply because of that image stabilisation. Um, but if you're just a photography, you know, just a photographer, then this lens is probably going to be better value for money. Now. Out of the two, I'd probably say the uh, Canon 85mm 1.4 is going to be a better lens, but uh, not by much. So this is where I start to notice the autofocus ain't working too well. Starts to behave a bit peculiar, but it just doesn't find doesn't find the subject. That's where I find the Canon 8514 behaves better. Not by much, but definitely, definitely better. Here we go. This is the kind of shots I was after. So I think that's uh, pretty much me guys, uh, the light's fading, oh, I'm getting a bit tired, so I think I'm going to head back to the studio and get these photos processed, but um, if, again if you want to watch more an in-depth video of the Sigma 85mm f1.4 HSM art then go ahead and watch my in-depth video that you can see just here. But until next time guys you know what to do, keep creating.